Hi everybody, I thought I put out a video. I actually had said I was going to take a long hiatus before I put out my next video, but I actually saw some stuff that I thought was really um, pretty interesting and urgent at the same time. I'll have a clip from another person's uh, video, which I think they explain it very well in the beginning, but then they went into just the fourth commandment, which was the Sabbath rest. And I, I wanted to cover a bit more than that, but I have his intro and then I'll go into the coverage of the Mount Sinai and the climate commandments that they're talking about at this COP27 uh, that's coming up and then I'm going to talk just a little bit about the upcoming eclipses just to make everybody aware of all these events that are unfolding in terms of prophecy so with that I'll go from here there is a lot happening right now in fulfillment of Bible prophecy you don't want to miss any of it Sunday, November 13, should be an interesting day. It falls in the middle of the COP27 Climate Conference to be held this year from November 6 to 18 in Sharm el-Sheikh, Egypt. As in previous years, this fall's United Nations Climate Change Conference will focus on developing policies, social momentum, and political action aimed at combating climate change. COP27, however, is also taking a strange turn toward the spiritual. Over the weekend of November 12th through 13th, few official discussions or activities are planned at COP27. This provides a major moment when the attention of media and participants can be turned to interreligious climate messaging and a transformative vision. On Sunday, November 13th, religious leaders will return to Mount Sinai, a mountain whose memory and meaning loom large as a place of revelation in the collective consciousness of Christianity, Judaism, Islam, and others. It is a site for turning to God and receiving God's message. According to the Bible, Mount Sinai is the place where God revealed Himself to the Israelites after rescuing them from Egyptian slavery. It's also the place where God gave Moses the Ten Commandments written on stone. However, 40 years before this story, God had also appeared to Moses on Mount Sinai, this time in the form of a burning bush that was not consumed by the flames. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a flame of fire out of the midst of a bush. And he looked, and behold, the bush burned with fire, and the bush was not consumed. It was here on Mount Sinai that God gave Moses his commission to free the Israelites from Egyptian slavery. In Exodus chapter 3, verse 10, God says, Come now therefore, and I will send thee unto Pharaoh, that thou mayest bring forth my people, the children of Israel, out of Egypt. Finally, God told Moses that after he freed Israel from Egyptian bondage, he would bring them back to Mount Sinai, where they would serve him. And he said, Certainly, I will be with thee, and this shall be a token unto thee that I have sent thee. When thou hast brought forth the people out of Egypt, you shall serve God upon this mountain. Now, what might this ancient experience at Mount Sinai mean for those meeting at the same mountain this fall? Here's what they say. We return to Sinai in a movement of repentance and quest. We seek a new vision for humanity and its endangered existence, and we seek to receive and amplify a message of life-sustaining living and habits that humanity needs to hear today. In this spirit, the project partners will bring together premier religious leaders from the world's major religions to gather upon Mount Sinai to engage in a first-ever climate repentance ceremony and to put forth a prophetic interreligious call to action, climate justice, 10 universal commandments. So what would a new set of 10 commandments focused on climate justice look like? We don't have to guess. One of the organizers of this event has already published a suggested list. So like he just mentioned on Sunday, November 13th, religious leaders from all major world religions will convene on Mount Sinai to seek a new vision and moral compass for humanity. And this will fall in the middle of the COP27, which is coming up. And that's from 
November 7th through the 18th. And this is their annual Global United Nations Summit dedicated to stopping climate control. And they put together, uh, well, rather in Newsweek, they listed the suggested list of their 10 commandments, the new climate commandments, and point those out here. Now, I personally don't believe this has made enough rounds within the Christian community, but in Newsweek in late August, August 25th, with Renewable Energy, they had an article for, for our sin of emissions, 10 plus one climate commandments. So they had these commandments, they only listed seven of them. They're not in order, but this is the order that they listed, and this is basically what they say. So one, acknowledge a higher power. Quote, like an Alcoholics Anonymous, the first commandment is to acknowledge with humility that we are partners with and subservient to the Creator. And then here's the link below for this Newsweek article if you want to read that for yourself. And it goes on, Number two, do not murder by allowing, quote, millions of people, usually the poorest and indigenous, will die and suffer from the effects of extreme heat and cold, wildfires, rising sea levels, and supercharged storms. So that's the second one. Third one, quote, do not steal, quote, by robbing nature her ability to regenerate. Number four, do not bear false witness by allowing, quote, distortions of truth and policy that lead to the sin of increased emissions, end of quote. Then number five, keep the Sabbath through a, quote, global weekly non-carbon day of rest. And these are just uh, abominable. And then number six, quote, Honor Mother Earth. It doesn't say honor your parents. Quote, climate change is a form of arson against the very home that nurtures our lives and, uh, and that of all living creatures, end of quote. And the last one suggested as one of the climate com commandments is do not covet. Quote, we have enough and we have the science and technology. We need to build a world in which all people can have enough. We just need to achieve the political will, end of quote. And these were the suggested commandments there. Uh, I don't know if these are going to go before the COP27, but these are just abominable. While they're eliminating God's true Ten Commandments, I believe that they want to put in their form of their own Ten Commandments and by going to Mount Sinai, they believe that they will get some kind of prophetic insight and I think they will get one, but uh, it will be a debased one. God will let them, like it says in Romans 1, in particular Romans 1 25, where it says, who exchanged the truth of God for the lie and worshiped and served the creature rather than the creator who is blessed forever. Amen. So I believe that when they go up to Mount Sinai and they do this ceremony and prophetic call for climate justice, like Moses going up to Mount Sinai and even Elijah went there as well to get a word from the Lord, but I think God will let them give them a lie instead, or they'll get some kind of demonic whatever, and that they will believe that their new, their 10 commandments of climate change will serve the creature rather than the creator, and them not believing the truth and exchanging it for the lies. And they might go as far as saying the old, quote unquote, old Ten Commandments that were given to Moses are now obsolete 
And now that we've gone to Mount Sinai, we've gotten notification from God that here are the new climate control 10 commandments instead, which are what we are to follow going forward. I, I don't know if that'll be the case, but I wouldn't put that past them. November 13th, uh, although I'm not professing a rapture date, I do think this is just another major sign of just how close we are at this point in time to the soon return of Jesus Christ. And if you want to see a little bit more about returning to Sinai, a prophetic call for climate justice and ceremony of repentance, again on November 13th, Mount Sinai with the COP27 UN Climate Conference. It's an interfaith center for sustainable development. I'll try and find where the PDF is for this and put that in the description box below. Also, I wanted to just briefly cover the upcoming partial solar eclipse and total lunar eclipse. So there's a partial solar eclipse coming up on October 26. And interestingly, it's covering mostly the area of Russia. It involves the Ukraine as well and parts of Eastern and Western Europe. So I don't know if that's a warning from God, just like he did with the Ninevites. There was a partial lunar eclipse that was over Nineveh, as well as Jonah, the prophet going there to warn them. So this is similar in, uh, in effect. And then also with the COP27, with that same uh, solar eclipse. Uh, if you look at uh, Shram El Shrek, that there will be a 27% sun coverage at that location that they're going to to hold the COP27 and then cross over, I guess, into Sinai to go to Mount Sinai, or either they might go to the one that's uh, in the Sinai Peninsula at St. Catharines, but I believe they're going to look across the Straits of uh, Titan. And interestingly, at this location where they're holding the COP27, there will be a 27% coverage of the sun uh, by the solar eclipse. So the greatest totality of the sun will be in this little uh, almond-shaped region, and then this greater next inner circle, which includes Moscow and almost St. Petersburg, and then Kiev, uh, which is in the Ukraine, is in the next outer region. So then one day after the start of the COP27 conference, they'll have the total lunar eclipse on November 8th, the day after it starts on the 7th. And for those who believe that both Passover and Sukkot are tabernacles, in this series of four total lunar eclipses, uh, this would be the last one in that series falling on Sukkot or tabernacle for those who believe that everything is a month later. But either way, this is a day after the start of the COP27, and I believe it could be another omen or sign for them going up to Mount Sinai, as well as this potentially being tabernacles, depending on which calendar you use. Anyways, I hope that this video has been informative and a blessing to you. But either way, there are so many signs that are converging, uh, including these, that I believe that this is now the time to get saved if you aren't saved. And if you are, it's the time to, if you got one leg in the world, then it's time to get your house in order as well. But anyways, I don't want to put out any more videos unless the Lord calls me to do so to share with you guys and so 
but um, since this is such a high watch time, I'm just going to pretty much lay low on producing videos again, unless I feel like the Lord is calling me or urging me to do so. And so I rather spend these last weeks, if it in fact is in 2022, which I think that it is for me personally, that I rather get my own house in order and and become even closer to the Lord at this point in time and not produce so many videos unless the Lord is asking me to do so. Anyways, again, I hope this has been a blessing and I hope to see you in the clouds instead. Take care.